السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا All praise and thanks is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him, we thank him We seek his guidance, his help, his mercy, his forgiveness Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses with guidance and Islam and Iman, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray, due to the person turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can guide. And we testify that no one has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his messenger and his servant. Uh, after thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would like to uh, thank the brothers uh, and this organization, this center. We've heard a lot of good stuff about this organization all the way from the UK. And it's my pleasure to be here with the brothers uh, on this Thursday night, on this occasion, uh, to share some few words. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it from the height into the people's heights and to make it all in our skills of good deeds. As you all know, that whoever comes to the masjid or comes to a gathering seeking to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the angels will sit with them and that this gathering when he leaves that gathering his previous sins are washed away so alhamdulillah for this opportunity that we are here trying to you know soften our hearts purify our hearts to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa thkurullah kathira la'allakum tuflihun Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently in order to be successful. And that the angels, they sit down in these gatherings. And they report to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I found your servants remembering you. And I found your servants uh, sitting in a gathering. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember us the same way we are remembering him in a gathering better than this gathering. And today inshallah ta'ala we will speak about Iman, how to increase our Iman. Um, we live in a time where there are temptations everywhere. We live in a time where there is uh, lots of distractions. We live in a time where there's lots of ghafla, people are heedless. We live in a time where some of the fuqaha, they described as fasad is zaman. When, when we live in a time where People are very far away, maybe from knowledge, from the scholars, from the religion. Uh, there will come this time, and how even you know those who might even uh, this doesn't apply here. But for those who don't live in a Muslim country where they don't have access to a Muslim community or knowledge, but even the rulings or implementing the rulings, it differs in these communities because of how far they are they are from the Deen. So. You can argue that we live in tough times and um, the Prophet Sallallahu when he described to us you know, some of the signs of the hour it seems parallel to what we are seeing today but regardless of that we all know that death is haq that we will all leave this world soon and we all know that Yawm Al Qiyamah is haq the day of judgment is real as well and we all know that Jannah is haq well, Jahannam is haq, you know, that paradise is real and the hellfire is real. There are going to be people who will enter paradise for sure. And there are going to be people who will enter the hellfire for sure. Um, so this question of how to increase our iman is very important to protect ourselves, to stay steadfast on this path, to be from those who are the faizin, the winners, the successful people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The real successful people and the real winners are the mu'minun. 
and mu'minun are those with iman are those uh, with iman and in this uh, surah surah al-mu'minun there are many characteristics that describe them but the first one is alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un those people who when they when it comes to prayers they have khashya they are khashi'un okay so before we answer the question of how to increase the iman let us define what is iman what does iman actually mean uh, iman is actually a very big term and um, lots of meanings come under it okay and uh, the fuqaha they described it or the ulama they described it as fi lugha the arabic language it means at tasdiq it means to believe as sidq so whenever allah says alladhina amanu the mufassirun they always say alladhina sadaqu billahi wa rasulihi ila akhirih naam and in the in the shar'i meaning okay al iman huwa al i'tiqad bil qalb it is the faith or the belief in the heart it starts with the heart wal qawlu bil lisan and the iman is the statement from the tongue where the first pillar in islam we testify with our tongue that we believe in Allah and there's no one else to be worshipped except Him and that we believe in the Messenger, etc, etc. Which means that it's not enough to say Amanna in our hearts and our tongues doesn't testify to it. Al-Qawlu bil-Lisan wal-Jawaruhu bil-A'mal And it is to act upon it with actions. So also it's not enough to say I believe in my heart and I believe in my tongue. It has to have those three Beliefs from three places. The third one is actions. The Prophet says, "Innama al-a'malu bil-niyat." The actions are according to what's inside the heart, which is the intentions. So, action or belief without action. Some of the scholars they said it's like a tree without fruits. It's baseless. It's worthless. There's no value. So, anyone who claims that he has iman, the proof of that is through his actions. You will see that he does many good deeds. He prays on time, he reads lots of Qur'an, he does adhkar, many good deeds. This is a proof that his iman is strong. Okay, and then they describe the ulama, what increases the iman, okay, how the iman works. Yazidu bi ta'a. The iman, it becomes strong and it increases with every good deed that you make, every good deed that you do. Yazidu bi ta'a. Wa yanqus bil ma'asiyah. And it decreases and it becomes weak with the ma'asi. Every time someone commits a sin, or disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or leaves a wajib, backbites, does any type of sin, the iman decreases. Who can repeat that for me, inshallah? The definition of iman. Not in Arabic, in, in English, inshallah. Faddal. Okay, so al-i'tiqad al believe from the heart, naam. The statement of the tongue and the actions, ahsant. And how does Iman work? Mm -hmm. Increases with the good deeds and decreases with the sins. Okay, so this, in short, is a definition and a criteria of how Iman works. And it's very important that, that we remember it because once we do, it becomes a foundation in our life. Okay, whenever uh, you feel sad, or you feel depressed, there's a link to the Iman with that. Whenever you feel good, and whenever you feel happy, there's a link and a sign that your Iman is strong. And um, we all can testify to this, we can all experience that. Whenever, yani, let's say someone fasted, he prayed all of his salah in the masjid, he did his adhkar, he gave some sadaqah, uh, he prayed taraweeh, let's say, or he prayed qiyam uh, al he went did a good deed uh, to someone, he helped a brother, he was good to his parents, he did so many good deeds, you'll find that it's as if it's the happiest day, one of the happiest days of his life. And someone else has say, you know, he's sleeping all day, he's, um, you know, being harsh to people, being rude, he is, uh, you know, his business, he's involved in riba, he's stealing, uh, he's lying, he's backbiting, he, um, you know, has haram relationships, he looks at haram, you'll find that that person, his heart becomes hide, and he's not happy. Okay, now 
Iman, we defined it that is from the height. We all establish, we all uh, know that it comes from the height. Now, the height, there's three types of heights that people have. There's no other type except these three types. The first type, al qulub al salima Heights that are peaceful, that has tranquility, that has rest in it. That's the first type. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ The day where neither wealth or children will benefit the person. What day is that? Day of judgment. Nothing will benefit that person. How rich you are, how famous, etc. Except one thing, the one who has a heart that is salim. How do you get a heart that's salim? It's got iman. A heart that's full of iman and a heart that is peaceful. And it only becomes peaceful due to doing many good deeds and staying away from sins. So that's the first type. The second type is قُلُوبٌ marida, Hearts that are sick. Hearts that have an illness in it. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا In their hearts are sickness, are diseases, are illnesses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased their hearts with sickness. How does it become sick? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he described that every time a person commits a sin, a black dot is placed in his heart. And the more sins he commits, the more black dots is in his heart. Until he, gets, he commits so many sins that his heart is full of black dots and is covered. When the heart is full of black dots, it becomes ill and it becomes sick. So these are due to lots of sins that the person commits. It becomes marid. And the last one is قُلُوبٌ mayita. قُلُوبٌ mayita. When the heart خلاص, it's not operating anymore, it's dead. You tell the person, قَالَ اللَّهِ قَالَ رَسُولِ He will say, I don't care. You tell him, حَيَّ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ حَيَّ عَلَى الفلاح. He says, I don't care. He will say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ الزَّكَاةِ I don't care. The heart is dead, خلاص. As if there's nothing left in it. خَتَمُ اللَّهُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ خَتَمُ اللَّهُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَى سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَى أَبَصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةِ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khatama ala qulubihim. He has closed their hearts. Their hearts are sealed. It doesn't operate anymore. And this, it can also happen due to so many sins to the point where the person, he doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore to the point where his heart is converted. What is the most frequent dua the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make? Huh? Ahsant. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O the one who turns the hearts, make my heart firm on your deen. This was his most frequent dua. Because none of us here were guaranteed. Ya ayuhu ladina amunu attaqu Allah, haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah, the right taqwa, and do not die except in a state of Islam. None of us are guaranteed that we are going to live all of our lives guided. We don't know what death that we will have. How many stories, scary stories do we hear of fulan? So-and-so used to be in the masjid, used to be you know, given da'wah, used to be you know, always reading Quran, and then we hear something else. And similarly, we hear people who were sinners, who were musicians, who were up to wrong things, and they become du'ats. The Prophet ﷺ says the qulub is in between the, ha- the, the fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can easily swap it around and turn it around. So this is the definition or the types of hearts. Then we go back to taqwa. Also taqwa has a link with iman and the heart. Taqwa is in the heart and when the iman becomes strong, it gains taqwa. And when you have taqwa, you have so many things, so many benefits. You become a higher level 
Okay? وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will have a way out from every evil. وَيَجْعَلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a furqan for him, a criteria, a guide. He starts going towards the good and avoiding the bad. What does taqwa mean? The ulama, they said, At-taqwa an taj'al baynaka wa bayna ma'asiyatillah hijab, hijab, okay, or sutur. Is to make between you and sinning or displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a barrier. Okay, so this is one of the definitions. At-taqwa, qala Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, Ali the famous companion and a cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, At-taqwa huwa al-khawfu min al-jaleel. Taqwa is to fear the Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say fear, we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of love. Because we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and he blessed us. And he made what is in the ard jami'a, he made for us in the land all the bounties for us. And he gave us health and wealth and, and, and children and so many blessings that we're not able to count every day on a daily basis. And then on top of that, we disobey him. So a muttaqi, he fears to betray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He fears you know, to ruin that relationship he has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he fears that Allah will hold him to account. So at-taqwa huwa al-khawf min al-jaleel. Wal-amalu bit-tanzeel. And it is to have actions and act according to the tanzeel, the wahi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam statements and the verses uh, and the revelations from the Quran and the sunnah. This is the tanzeel. Al-amalu bit-tanzeel. Wal-rida bil-qaleel. And it's to be content and grateful and shakir, even if you have little, even if you don't have much. rahil, And it is to prepare, be prepared for the day of judgment, the day when the person will die. Yawmir rahil. So this, in, in, in short, is what taqwa is. The Mufassirun, they said at taqwa, it is to follow the orders, the commandments. أقيم الصلاة سمعنا وطعنا. كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون سمعنا وطعنا. Every commandment that Allah and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم commands us, and they are all, you know, under our capabilities. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. No commandment in the Quran and the Sunnah is impossible or even difficult for the person. النواهي, and it is to avoid the nawahi. It is to avoid uh, disobeying or whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made haram and forbidden is to stay away from it. Whoever does that, whoever fears Allah and has taqwa of Allah as much as possible, he is a muttaqi. He is a muttaqi and uh, his iman will be strong. When uh, Ali said, al-rida bil qalil, it means a muttaqi has to be a person who is grateful. And the scholars, they mention that one of the signs of a grateful person, min alamat al-shukr, huwa isti'mal al-ni'am fi ta'atillah. It is to use the blessings that Allah gave us in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every blessing that you have, you use it to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He blessed you with wealth, he blessed you with children. He blessed you even with a good voice. You use it for Quran. You wouldn't use it for music, for example. وَعَدَمْ إِسْتِعْمَالِهَا فِي مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ And a grateful person, he does not use his blessings in disobeying Allah and sinning. In disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sinning. And the companions, they said, at taqwa is similar to like a very narrow, very small alleyway. And in this alleyway, when you walk past it, to your left and to your right, there are harmful plants that might poke you, that might harm you, that might ruin your clothes, that might, you know, cut your skin. So typically a person, when he walks past a path like that, he's going to be very cautious. taqwa fil lugha huwa al-hadar. Taqwa in the Arabic language means al-hadar. 
to be cautious. So when a person is walking past, he's going to be cautious not to ruin his clothes and so on. Similarly, when we walk this path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are cautious not to disobey him, not to displease him. Okay? فَاتَّقُوا الدُّنْيَا وَاتَّقُوا النِّسَاء The Prophet sallallahu said. Be cautious, be careful from the dunya. And be cautious and be careful from women, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi وَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبَهَاتِ فَقَدْ اسْتَبْرَأَ لِدِينِهِ وَلِعَرْضِ The word taqwa is used many times in the ahadith to mean caution. Okay, and whoever is careful not to do, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْحَلَالَ bayyan That the halal is clear and the haram is clear. وَبَيْنَهُمَا أُمُورٌ And between it, they are matters that have shubahat, doubtful. We don't know if it's halal or haram. فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبَهَاتِ Whoever is careful and cautious from the doubtful matters, he has honored or protected his dignity and he has protected his deen. Because in the end, the person might fall into shubahat, then fall into sins. Okay. Let us now speak about practical steps on how to increase the iman. Number one, as salah. To try our best to pray all our salawat on time. Because the word salah in itself in the Quran is mentioned hundreds of times. Okay? And we also mention that general, as many good deeds as possible, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He also or He always connects iman with amal. Alladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Alladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Many times in the Quran. So following the iman with actions. Okay, so the first thing is salah. Praying our salawat on time. The Prophet sallallahu his last words before he passed away, he said, As-salah, 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 wa ma malakat aymanukum. As-salah, as-salah, wa ma malakat aymanukum. This was his last words. Okay? And similarly, the Prophet sallallahu he said, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةَ عَيْنِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ The most beloved thing for him, what gave him rest and, and coolness of his eyes, was salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَنَّاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ وَكَانُوا لَنَا عَابِدِينَ وَكَانُوا لَنَا عَابِدِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we have made them leaders, a'imma, leaders of guidance, leaders who were guided and they guided others. And we inspire them to perform all types of fi'l al-khayrat, good deeds. So these are the good deeds that made them special. وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ And to establish the salah. And to give the zakat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, وَكَانُوا لَنَا عَابِدِينَ And they were to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worshippers. So you will find in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a third of his life was ibadah. Salah, istighfar, dua, Quran. A third of his life was dedicated ibadah. And he will pray in the night Salawat for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will wake up at night and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once Aisha radiallahu anha, she saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa pray at night. And she saw that there was an effect or impact on his feet due to the amount of salah that he used to pray. So she said to him, You are Rasulullah. You are the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he forgave his past sins and his future sins. In other words, you don't need to do all of this. So what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi say? If that's the case, should I not therefore become a grateful servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he gave me this position? What we learn from this is that whenever Allah blesses you with anything, you should increase in ibadah, not decrease. Allah gave you more money, you should give more sadaqah. Allah gave you a better position, you have more authority or more status or whatever, you should help more people 
in that case because you have more of an ability. Whatever Allah blesses you with, the more He does, the more you should do good. So this is salah, okay? Trying to pray our salawat on time. Trying to pray our salah in the jama'ah. You know, the companions, they would never miss takbirat al-ihram. Not miss a salah in the masjid jama'ah. That was impossible. But takbirat al-ihram, which is what? The first takbirah when you enter the salah. Which shows they were never late. They were always there be before the imam. Umar radiallahu anhu at his time, if someone misses takbirat al-ihram, he'll punish him. He'll wait for him in the door and if he doesn't have a good excuse, he will punish him for it. If one of the sahabis, he missed takbirat al-ihram, the companions they will go visit him in his house and will say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raj'oon, adamallahu ajrakum. They will think a musibah happened. A misfortunate situation happened because it was nearly impossible. Okay, and as we know, the salah in the masjid is multiplied 27 more times than praying alone. So uh, praying in the masjid is from the best ways to increase our iman and, and to purify our hearts. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, should I not inform you about, uh, or he asked, if you were to live near sea water and you were to wash your bodies five times a day, with this clean, pure water. Would any dirt remain? They said, of course not. So the Prophet ﷺ said, likewise, each salah is a purification. Each salah, it, it purifies the same way the water purifies the dirt. This purifies the heart. SubhanAllah. And every time someone salah, uh, prays, between each salah, there's kafara. The sins are washed away. And every time you do wudu, Every drop that comes out from your hand is every sin that the hand committed washed away. And the face, and the feet, and every footstep that you take to the masjid is a hasana and a sin washed away. Subhanallah. So imagine doing this five times a day. And for your information, the word sharia, what does it mean in the Arabic language? It means a stream. Ma jariya. Yeah, that's what sharia means. And even today we use the word shari' to mean roads because it means a path. So the water stream, okay, has many benefits. We use it to wash, we use it to drink. It leads us towards good. Same way the sharia, we benefit, the heart benefits from it. It cleans the inner heart and it leads us towards paradise, subhanAllah. But the first thing is salah on time. Secondly, al athkar Performing or doing your athkar in the morning The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pray Salat al-Fajr Lead the people And he would stay every day after Fajr Until the sun will come out Remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala And he says for me to remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Is more beloved to me than the dunya and what's in it SubhanAllah And when the sun comes out he will pray the two rak'ah Duha He said whoever does that it will be an accepted Hajj and Umrah for him. Imagine someone who does that every day. And it's not difficult. Maybe the first couple of days will be difficult, but if you make it a habit and you sleep early, then it's easy. If we follow the ayah, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa, وَجَعَلْنَا nahara ma'asha, We have made night a place for rest. We made it dark so that we can rest. And we made the day for livelihood and for work and so on. The Prophet ﷺ between Isha and his sleep was just a short gap. And the scholars, they said, staying up after Isha is makruh. Except if there's guests, if you're seeking knowledge, if you're spending good time with family. So if we follow the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam and sleep after Isha every day, we will wake up for Fajr or one hour, two hours before Fajr easily with lots of energy. They will pray our Qiyam, do some istighfar, pray Fajr on time, after Fajr, we'll do some Athkar, we'll read some Quran, then we pray that two rak'ah duha, we leave the masjid, we see the sun out, we feel so fresh inside our hearts. And we still have energy. You go have breakfast, spend some time with your family, go to work, mashallah, tabarakallah. You will have a positive day. Because the Prophet said, whoever wakes up for Fajr, whoever wakes up for Fajr, he will be nasheet. 
you'll be very active, very productive. Many of us are complaining, why are we not productive? Because we sleep so late. Because a lot of us miss Fajr, this is why. The Prophet said, whoever misses Fajr, he will have a day that is kusul. Full of kasal, full of laziness. Even if he slept for 12 hours, it's not enough. You'll be yawning all the time. No blessings in your time. You'll always be tired. But Fajr, even if he slept four hours, it's different. So if we uh, sleep early, we can wake up every day early, we can do our adhkar. And as we mentioned earlier, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Adhkar is what will give you success, wallahi. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ This is not my words, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words. Do your adhkar, you will find success in your health, in your deen, in your dunya, in your work, with your family. And the adhkar is a protection. Because we live in a very difficult time where there's fitan everywhere, where there's temptations everywhere. What will help you is the adhkar. Adhkar, the Prophet said, just ayatul kursi alone. This is from the first. Kicks out the shaitan from the morning all the way to the sunset. And whoever reads ayatul kursi from night time all the way to the next day. So khalas, this is angels, bodyguards with you from the morning, free of charge. All you have to do is read ayatul kursi, you have that for 12 hours. Then if you want to renew your subscription, read ayatul kursi again, that's another 12 hours. Do it every day. Especially that, wallahi, we use our time on Facebook and Instagram and chatting on our phones. 20 minutes is gone there. Type, use that 15, 20 minutes. Leave your phone to a side. Give some time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do your adhkar in the morning. So we said, number one, salah. Number two, adhkar. Number three, qira'at al-Qur'an. Every day, let us try to read some Qur'an. Al-Qur'an nur. It will put nur in your heart. Al-Qur'an will be a shafa'ah on the day of judgment li ahlihi, the one who reads it, the one who's close to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yarfa, he will raise your status for those who read the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yarfa'a aqwam, he raises nations and he disgraces nations. Yeah, those who follow the Qur'an, Allah will raise their status. Those who are away from the Qur'an, they are disgraced. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, if our hearts was pure, we would never have enough of the Qur'an. If our hearts were really pure, we would always be close to the Qur'an, always reading it. Every free time that we have. Our lunch break, we will eat quickly and then we'll just sit down and read Qur'an. Because this will give yani, sakina to our hearts. Once one of the companions, he was reading Qur'an. And when he was reading Qur'an, it was night time. He was in a different planet. He had so much khushu'. He was يعني, يتف, يتدبر, He's you know, into the ayat and pondering and reflecting, contemplating. And then he saw his horse was, was reacting. His horse was making noises, was jumping up and down and stuff. So he was surprised. With that, he narrated this story to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, Tilka as sakina This is sakina that was descended because of the Qur'an. When you were reciting Qur'an, sakina came down and the horses, they see sakina. So this is why he responded like that, subhanAllah. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Khayrakum man ta'allam al-Qur'an wa'allama. The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and then teach it. These are the best people ever. And the one who is a mahir, who is an expert, a master in reciting Qur'an, then he is with the angels ascending. And whoever recites the Qur'an and he struggles, maybe he doesn't know Tajweed, or you know, he struggles, he's not as good as others, but he is still striving, trying hard every day, then he has double the rewards, subhanAllah. Why? Nina Rabbana Kareem. And Allah doesn't, you know, waste the efforts of the Muhsineen. Those striving and those efforts to recite the Quran, there's ajr in it. And for every letter that you recite is a hasana. And the Prophet said, I don't say alif, la, meem is a hasana. 
or is a letter, but alif is a letter, and lam is a letter, and meme is a letter. And for every letter that you recite, is multiplied 10 to 700 times. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, there is nothing faster and easier to get millions of hasanat than reading the Quran. And my advice for everyone is to have a program with the Quran. Every day you recite the Quran. Yeah, the scholars they call it al wird al yawmi. You have a daily wird. It could be two ayah, uh, two pages every day. It could be five pages a day. It could be ten. It could be twenty. Whatever you're capable of, but have a daily session with the Quran. If you do twenty between each salawat or after each salah, let's say salat al fajr, read five pages or read four pages. Four pages will take maximum 10 minutes. Read it with, uh, you know, reflections and pondering. After Dhuhr, do the same thing. Or come to the masjid before the iqama, between the iqama and the adhan, or the adhan and the iqama. Read four pages. Every day, if you do that after Dhuhr, and after Asr, and after Maghrib, and after Isha, you've done 20 pages of the Quran, which is one juzo. If you do that every day, every month, you completed the Quran. Every year you did it 12 times. 10 years, how many times is that? Millions and millions of hasanat. You will go to Allah as a billionaire. Subhanallah. So it's something very simple. If you uh, calculate your day of how much time you spend on, on, uh, online. Okay, there's a new app actually. Uh, sorry, I don't remember the name of it. But it calculates how, how many hours you spend online. Wallahi, on average people are spending 6-7 hours. We're not saying six, seven hours. We're saying half an hour, 40 minutes. You will complete the Quran every month. Imagine you spend that same time with the Quran. You would have completed the Quran maybe four times, five times a month, subhanAllah. فَقِرَاءَةُ Quran. That's thirdly, this increases the iman. And uh, doing tadabbur, uh, pondering and reflecting. You know, when you hear verses that talk about Jannah, start thinking about paradise. Start thinking, how can I... Get there. When you hear ayat about Yawm al Qiyamah and the Adab and the Iqab, start reflecting about that. And every ayat in the Quran, try to ponder and reflect so you can have this impact. Um, I know someone actually who was a very, very um, bad uh, Muslim, let's say, doesn't pray and doesn't know anything about the deen and does music, drinks alcohol, smokes, you name it. He decided one day that. He's not going to leave the haram, but he wants to, you know, learn the Qur'an. So he used to read one page of the Qur'an before he sleeps. And he knows, as a Muslim, he knows what's haram. He knows zina is haram, alcohol is haram. Okay, but when you hear it from people, it's not the same. So this guy started reading the Qur'an only one page a day. And he started to like it. He started to sleep better. It gave him rest. So the whole day he's doing haram and whatnot. But at night, he does wudu. And he reads Quran, one page. After a few weeks, he started liking it even more. He started reading two pages a day. Then the next week, three pages a day. And it had an impact. Every time he would read and close it, it would be like, subhanAllah, wow, this is amazing. I never knew that it was this enjoyable, this amazing. And then when he reached, you know, the part in the Quran where it says, Aqimu salah, so okay. I heard it now directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are Allah's words. I need to start praying. So he started praying. And then when he heard, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ zina," for example. Okay, I heard it directly from Allah. I need to leave it. When he read the verse that khamir is, for, is, is what will mislead you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَاشْتَنِبُوا So stay away from it. He said, I heard it from Allah now. He left alcohol. Slowly, slowly, bit by bit, started leaving one haram after another until he has no more haram in his life. And he's praying and following the, the, the commandments in the Quran. And then he left the haram completely. And he became, mashallah, you know, very practicing and, and doing lots of good khair, subhanAllah. For Al-Quran is what changes the heart. So, number three, Qira'at Al-Quran. Number four, as suhb al-Saliha. Having good companions, this will increase the iman. Uh, when you see your friend praying qiyam, 
that makes the heart yearn to pray Qiyam because you see Lidhat al you see the sweetness of Ibad when he's doing a sujood and you know reading Quran, you see that it's benefiting him, you want that yourself. When you see him reading Quran, you want it you want it yourself. When you hear he's giving sadaqah here and there, it has an impact. A sahib, sahib, the friend is what will pull you and impact you. No one has more of an impact, not your parents, not your teachers, more than your friends. And before I went to Medina on a plane, I made a dua. Most people will make dua to meet the scholars. I said, Ya Allah, I don't want to become friends with the scholars. I want, to, I want you to give me the right companions. Bless me with good friends. Because the good friends will take me to the right scholars. They will take me to the durus. They will take me to places where there's khair. And subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. Yeah, it's not good to mention these things, but he blessed me with good companions. And he, he also blessed me to be close with some of the scholars there who I benefited a lot from. So very, it's very important to have you know, good friends and always make dua. Wherever country you go to, wherever you're visiting, that Allah blesses you with good people, good friends. We all know the, the famous example of the, the good friend is like the one who sells perfume. And the bad friend is like the one who's a blacksmith. We all know that one, right? The same way the perfume is going to rub on your clothes and your skin, the good friends, good characteristics, good words, good manners would rub on you as well. And the same way the bad smell of the blacksmith, it will rub on your clothes and it will burn your clothes and make it dirty. A bad person's bad characteristics, his words, his manners, his thinking will have an impact on you. So good, good companions, and whenever you feel that your iman is weak, call one of the good brothers, meet up with them, you know, uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together, say Ali Rabbika, say Ali Nafsika, the Salaf used to sit down and say, you know, let's remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for an hour. You know, let's just not do anything, sit down and let's just remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Quran, al-Salah, al-Dhikr, al-Suhb al-Saliha. Secret deeds. Secret deeds. The Salaf, they had lots of secret deeds because they used to say that the deeds that we perform in the public, we, d we never used to count it. But the good deeds that we used to do in private, this is what we rely on. Why is that? Because of ikhlas, sincerity, ahsant. Fasting every Monday and Thursday. Make it a habit. No one has to know about it. Go to a um, Muslim graveyard once a week once every two weeks or whatever, for half an hour, sit there, visit the dead, reflect. The Prophet ﷺ said that I was going to stop you from visiting the graves, except that it reminds you of death. So visit the graves. It will make you ask yourself, you know, what have I left behind? What have I done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I will be like that person. And in the graveyards that we have, the ages are mentioned in the, in the graveyard. I'm not that old, but whenever I go there, I see people way younger than me. Or some my age, or some just a bit older, just a bit younger. And it makes you think, subhanAllah, you know, if he died before me, what makes me, you know, because naturally we always think I still have time. I'm still going to live a long time. So reflecting about death is very important. Uh, finding a place in a masjid where they're doing janaza salah. Visiting, you know, a maskeen in a hospital. Um, giving sadaqah in private. You know, let's say there's an orphan or, or a widow that you know about. No one else knows. Sometimes Allah tests you that something happens and no one's there. No one knows about. To test you if you will still do it. So, doing these secret good deeds, make sure, you know, the Salaf, each one of them had at least one deed that they used to keep in private that no one knew about for the rest of their lives. One of the Salafs used to fast a lot, that before he leaves the house, his wife will give him the food. And he would take it with him and, and, and 
you know, um, you know, pretend that he will eat it outside, but he 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 wouldn't. He would donate it. One of the salafs will sleep next to his wife, like um, you know, a baby. He will pretend he's sleeping next to his wife until she falls asleep. Then he gets up to pray qiyam al-lil. So doing uh, secret good deeds. Uh, six sadaqa. Giving sadaqa increases the iman a lot. Because sadaqa expiates or, or washes away the sins. Okay? Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he said in a hadith that fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala aina ma kunt. Fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wherever you are. When you're alone and when you're, when you're with people. When you're at your home country or in another country. And follow the sayyya bil hasana. Follow the sin. If someone commits a sin, do your good deeds straight away. Give sadaqah, read Quran. Do your good deeds straight away. وَخَالِتِ nas And mix with the people with good akhlaq, good characteristics, good manners. Okay? Uh, lastly, you know, being good with the people. You know, a sign of a person's good iman is his mu'amalat, his dealings. Because when someone's iman is strong, he's good with the people and he's more positive towards the people. But when someone is high, is not good, he's harsh with people. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he said that when someone was praised in front of him, he said, هَلْ عَمَلْتُهُ بِالْدِّنَارِ dirham." Someone was praised, but, but Umar said, Did you, you know, do you know him personally for you to say that? Have you had any personal dealings with him? Have you, have you done business with this person? Have you traveled with him? Have you lived with him? In that case, you can't say he's a pious or, or whatever. Because it's easy in a masjid to show a good character for one hour or half an hour a day. Or, you know, it's easy. But what about you know, the people who live with you at home? What about your wife? What does she think about you? Does she think you're pious the same way the people in the masjid do? Your parents, your, your siblings, the people who know you, the, your, your business partner. What does he think about you? So uh, that's what's uh, important. You know, there's a famous Arabic quote. Amilhum bid dinari wa dirham wa la ta'amilhum bis salati wa siyam. Test people with the dinar and dirham, not with salah and siyam. That's uh, what will uh, bring out the truth in people. Tayyip, lastly, last thing that I wanted to say. Sins, wallahi, thumma wallahi, destroys you. Sins, it destroys the heart, it destroys the person, it destroys the honor, it destroys the character, it makes a person far away from Allah. Whenever you're far away from Allah, you're not happy. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْقَهَا Whoever is away from Allah, and turns away from Allah, indeed he will have a miserable life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَمَنْ شَرَحُ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ فَوَيْنٌ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِّنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ The heart, okay, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ He expands his chest. He purifies, softens his heart. When the heart is soft, فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِنْ رَبِّي He is upon light, sakina, tranquility, happiness, guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ Woe to the ones with hard hearts. Why do they have hard hearts? Because they are away from dhikr Allah. They are away from Allah. They are away from following the guidance. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا Subhanallah. When Allah loves someone and He wants to guide him, يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ He will expand his chest and his heart. He will give him that happiness. The heart will feel it للإسلام. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray, Due to the person's sins and turning away from Allah, يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا He will make his heart 
ضيق restricted tight hard these are all due to the sins these are all due to being away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala طيب Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the good deeds he will increase you in more good guidance وَيَزِيدُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اهْتَدُوا هُدَى And Allah will increase the pers- the people who are guided with more guidance. So Wallahi, the more good deeds that you do, the more you're following the commandments, the more blessings in your life, the more the heart feels rest, the more happiness. This is the only way of happiness. How many people are very rich, have status, have everything they want, but they're not happy? Wallahi, they're not happy. How many actors, people who are in the music industry, who's heard of Robin Williams? Famous American comedian. He used to make people laugh. He used to make people quote-unquote happy. He committed suicide. Three days ago, a person who was in my school, non-Muslim, James, committed suicide. In the UK, one in ten people are... One in ten people from the youth contemplated thoughts about suicide 20 million people in the UK are on antidepressant pills people are not happy people are depressed Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said on the day of judgment there will be a person who had ashaddul bala he had all of the worst trials and tribulations and hardships and difficulties you name it no money. His, his bala, he was tested the most. Ashaddul bala. No one was tested more than him. Walakin, he was a mu'min. He was a believer. He was a sabir. He used to pray to Allah. He used to say, Ya Rabb. For on the day of judgment, he will be dipped in Jannah just for a small moment. He will see glimpses of paradise. He will see the birds, the rivers. He will hear the people of Jannah. Immediately his heart will feel happy. Allahu Akbar. And then he will be asked, Ya Abd, in the dunya, were you ever unhappy? Were you ever sad and miserable? He will say, Wallahi, I was never sad, I was never miserable. If this is what I will get, Jannah, then I'm prepared to do even more than that. What, 60, 70 years? For an everlasting life in Jannah, Jannat al Naim, with Allah's pleasure. Wallahi, I was never in any difficulties. Why? Because of Iman. Iman is what will give you happiness. And then another person will come. He had the most ease. He was not tested at all. He had all of the pleasure, the luxury, the joy, wealth, health, fame, everything. He was the most. Wallahi, kan kafir. He was a disbeliever. He did not give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not recognize the rights of Allah. He turned away from Allah. So on the day of judgment, he will be dipped in Jahannam just for a small moment. And he will see the adab, the punishment, and people screaming, and the fire, and the blaze. He will see it just for a small moment. He will be asked, in the dunya, were you ever happy? Were you truly happy? He will say, wallahi, I was never happy. I tasted no ease. This is the truth. This is the truth. No iman equals no happiness. No matter what you think, even if it's just small joy, these people can't sleep at night. How many people who were millionaires committed suicide? They're not happy. We know this. There's actually a research, surprisingly enough, by Harvard University. One of the longest researchers. It took 40 years for them to do it. The research is called um, something along the lines of what makes us happy. What makes a person happy. And one of the number one factors to identify happiness or what makes a person happy is feeling loved. Feeling loved. When all your friends love you, your family, this gives you happiness. You have like a love tank and the more it's filled, the more happy you are. There's some truth in this. It's accurate. Even some children, when they get lots of love from their parents, they become more you know, uh, developed, better terbiyah. 
more confident. When they don't have love from their parents, they seek it elsewhere. That's why they say girls who don't have a good relationship with their father, they usually have lots of relationships. The Prophet وسلم, he said that Allah loves the person when he does the commandments. And the person becomes more beloved and more closer to Allah when he does the good deeds, the nawafil, the extra voluntary deeds. So what is the link here? Imagine the love from the people, but more importantly, the love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wouldn't you be happy? Don't you feel good when you know you've done your wajibat? When you strived your best away from the sins? Don't you personally feel good? And don't you feel bad inside your heart, no matter, even if you're on a five-star luxury holiday, but you know you disobeyed Allah, you know you committed some sins. Don't you feel bad inside your heart? You can't enjoy what's around you. This is the truth. Okay, so let us, you know, I mentioned five, six types of good deeds that we can do, if we can implement it every day. وَلَكِنَ الْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ You know, the good deeds are many. So many different good deeds. The point in essence and in conclusion is try your best brothers and sisters if they're here to do as many good deeds as possible and try your best to stay away from sins as much as possible. And if you did a sin or you've done sins, do a tawbah straight away. A tawbah, a ruju'a ila Allah, wa tarki al-ma'asiyah, wa nadmu ala fi'liha, وَالْعَزْمُ أَنْ لَا أَعُودُ إِلَيْهَا أَوْ لَا يُعُودُ إِلَيْهَا Tawbah is what? To have, to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to leave the sin and to feel guilt for committing the sin and to be determined not to return back to the sin. اللهم اغفر لنا دنوبنا اللهم اغفر لنا دنوبنا اللهم يا سميع الدعاء يا رب العالمين اللهم كفر عنا سيئاتنا اللهم طهر لنا قلوبنا اللهم وفقنا لما تحبه وترضى اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا كلها يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك المتقين الصادقين الخاشعين المسلمين المؤمنين يا رب العالمين اللهم نعود بك من الذنوب اللهم نعود بك من قصية القلوب اللهم اصلح شباب المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اصلح نساء المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اصلح أطفال المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم وفقنا لما تحبه وترضى اللهم يا ربنا كن بعون إخواننا المستضعفين المساكين في اليمن يا رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته